expulsion. Uh, I'm going to kind of briefly go through the rules uh, fairly quickly, and then I usually like to open it up to you guys to ask all kinds of questions because uh, usually one question from one person generates about 15 more, and uh, it kind of helps get a lot get people relaxed and not afraid to ask questions, which is very important. So, uh, my name is Rashad Chachakli, I'm the supervisor. Uh, this uh, event, you will be uh, designed, or the kids will be designing a, uh, constructing and testing a launch device to throw ping pong balls at a target at a uh, prescribed distance that will be determined the day of the event, the, the main event. Um, people always ask me, well, what's the distance? And I said, I ain't telling. Depends on whether I have my coffee or not. And only the kids get told when they show up to actually shoot. Um, the, the team size is typically one or two students. The approximate length of the event is about 15 minutes, depending on how crazy things get on the floor. Um, <clears throat> but uh, again, the, the object is to create a device that will throw these ping pong balls at, the, at, a, uh, at a target. Uh, at all times, safety goggles, this is something that's been new over the last, since last year, safety goggles are, are critical. We don't care about the style, but when they're shooting, we expect them to wear them or, or we won't let them shoot. So make sure, even if you don't check it in at impound, they need to have, uh, because some of you may have other events that require goggles and things like that, uh, make sure it's given to the students before they shoot. Do they have sports goggles or glasses? Do you wear those? Uh, well, these are my glasses. You have to have the goggles of some goggles or safety glasses, uh, with or without sight is fine. Like I thought, you had sports. Does that look like their goggles? I would. I'll check on that. Could it be, or you could wear regular glasses? Well, no, if you're wearing regular glasses, then typically you would wear a set of safety Those glasses over top. It's not so much for the balls, uh -huh. because there's a ton of balls flying everywhere. It's in, in the event of a failure. The sports goggles she's talking about, usually for soccer and stuff, shatterproof. You should yeah. have mine. Yeah, yeah. It, it'll probably be okay, but yeah, typically if, if you don't have sports goggles, a set of safety glasses or safety goggles, either one. Okay. Uh, I know it's annoying because I work out in the field and I have to wear safety glasses and I can't stand them, but uh, we like to keep, you know, if I've seen at least four failures of equipment where a piece of pipe or a piece of plastic uh, tubing or a rubber, uh, the, 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 the elastomeric membrane would snap off and uh, would have hit some. We had stuff fly all the way across the gym. So it was less about the balls than it was the, the actual device failing. It happens. We just want them to be safe. Uh, the other thing with the devices is they should have either rubber feet or cork feet or something or, or a pad underneath because we had instances of um, when, when they would drag the, uh, the device onto the, the gym floor, they would scratch it. I mean, a couple of times we had some really bad scratches that required an insurance uh, claim. So we kind of make sure we check on that when they impound it. Uh, yes? Tennis ball. Tennis balls would work. Yeah, it's basically because, you know, if you have a screw head, even bare plywood, if it's rough enough, will scratch it, scuff up the floor. So we, rubber, cork, piece of carpet, something uh, to, to mitigate any kind of damage to the gym floor. So this year, <coughs> there are no material or size restrictions for the, for the device that the, the kids create. Uh, however, Devices that are deemed hazardous by me uh, won't be allowed to launch. Lead acid batteries are a no-no, and flammable gas are not allowed. So that's in, it's in the rules. Uh, well, I, I'm getting there. Balls, balls must be launched by releasing uh, whatever stored energy that is contained in the device, however you, they choose to design it. Uh, for instance, uh, there will be no electrical uh, uh, wall outlet available for somebody to run an extension cord to their device. So if it's powered by electric energy, it probably it'll have to be self-contained. Um, 
energy can be added to, by students while at the launch line, stretching a rubber band, compressing a component, uh, ball, it says here no lead acid batteries, but I would assume that to mean, because it doesn't explicitly say no, that a D size lithium ion uh, Duracell type battery might be okay if that would work for them. Um, what about um, lithium polymer batteries? Lithium what? Polymer batteries. I have no idea what. Uh, it's a battery pack. Okay, for cell phone batteries. I was thinking more on radio controlled car, but yes. There's nothing. In, I think the reason for the lead acid and the flammable gas is because they're obvious, you know, with acid or, or uh, gasoline or flammable gases, that would be a hazard, considered a hazard. Uh, I can ask about, uh, you're talking like a battery pack, uh, I can double check that uh, as a question and put it on the on the website as a response. So, so last year it was a, considered a requirement that it was elastic. Yeah, last year it was the, the, the energy that uh, launched the balls would be elastomeric <laughs> in some form. This year... Whatever they want to do. Whatever you want to do. Okay. That's right. The the restriction has been lifted to, uh, I guess, spur some uh, additional creativity. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> all right. So, the balls may be loaded individually or all together, but not before approaching the launch line. So when we set the the uh, 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 when we set the uh, the uh, Oh, I'm having a brain fart here. Uh, course, the course or the or the event up. They start out at all, there are two lines. There's the line where they actually fire from, and there's a, a line that's about a couple of meters back, where when we tell them to get ready, you stay behind that line. Once we say go, they move up to the launch line, which is a prescribed the prescribed distance. Then they set up their their uh, load up the balls, do whatever they have to do, and start shooting at will, right? It doesn't They don't have to take turns. Everybody, all eight, and typically it's eight teams at a time. So there's gonna be 15 balls being shot by eight teams, and it's gonna look like balls are flying everywhere. They're gonna take stupid bounces to their favor. They're gonna take bounces that don't work in their favor. They're gonna bounce in or bounce out of the, the target area. And then whatever's left in the, in the actual target is what we score. Anything that sits on the floor after they finish shooting doesn't count. So, um, is is there a time limit to how much time uh, they have to said, dispense their once balls? Once we say go, there's a four minute limit. We we set a timer and we tell them you have four minutes to shoot. We say go, they just start firing. When there's a minute left. We give them a one minute warning, and then when the time's up, we tell them time's up, stop shooting. Uh, typically, it does not take four minutes to fire the 15 balls. We've, they're still putting pressure on us to maybe consider reducing the amount of time, but there are some teams, you know, they, they want to make sure everything's just so, and mm -hmm. usually you get a couple of teams during the event that, yeah, I want a little more time and make sure I'm, I'm hitting the mark. So. But typically, it's a four-minute. Once they once we say go, four minutes of shooting. The 15-minute window is for us to set them up, score after they're done, and then get the next uh, next eight eight uh, teams in place to, to start up. Um, <clears throat> okay, so all the devices must sit on rubber or soft material, uh, pad or feet, to prevent floor damage. Uh, the device, uh, any bag that you, uh, typically a clear plastic bag uh, to, to house your, uh, your ping pong balls and the ping pong balls must be marked with the team number. And we tell them to, on the, on the ping pong balls, you underline, uh, we, we put the number on two sides of the ball and you underline the number so that we don't mix up nines with sixes. It helps us do things like score quicker so we get, so we can turn the teams around faster and just avoid confusion in general. Uh, this is also it's still in, it's, it's in the rules uh, and I'll have those up. We'll, you can collect some of these at the end of the session. 
Uh, there are 15 balls. Ten of them are white, typically. Four are orange, um, and one is orange with a black stripe all the way around. And usually, you're better off marking them with a Sharpie because it, it stays on. It doesn't wipe off real easy. Um, okay, and there are no other alterations other than the white stripe, or pardon me, the black stripe or the numbers are allowed on the balls. Um, Impound. Pardon me. The team. The team number is on the balls. Two locate. You know, do it on two sides, so it helps us really uh, speed up the, the the scoring process and, and figuring out what ball goes in what bucket, so we can count them fast. Uh, the device itself must have the team name and the team number on it. Um, if you have. Uh, Goggles are not required to be impounded if they are using the goggles for other events, but they still have the team when you show up to actually shoot, you got to make sure your team has their goggles or they won't be allowed to shoot. So if you're showing up, say, early in the morning, they don't have it, maybe they're going to shoot, you know, the second round of, of eight teams or the third round if you have to go back somewhere and grab a set of goggles. Uh, you're also going to be required to um, <clears throat> do a practice log, which basically will assist the kids in uh, recording the, the distant, uh, a lot of information. For example, uh, the, the distance that I set from the target is anywhere between two meters and eight meters. And I'm going to say meters out loud because the last couple of years we've always had someone that said we did everything in inches and feet. We're not doing that. We're doing it in meters. So they have to use uh, uh, meters when they're doing their, their practice runs to figure out what settings on their device works to hit that target. So the practice log is going to allow them to say, OK, we're going to practice. Can we hit two meters? Whatever settings they do, they can record on this practice log, either the angle of the, the unit, the length, of how far you, let's say if, if, if it was elastomeric, how far do you stretch that rubber band uh, at this angle, it got you there. If it gets you to two and a half meters or two and a quarter meters, you don't really need that information. You just want to record the information that gets you to two meters, two and a half, three, all the way to eight. Because nobody's going to know what that distance is until the day, again, until uh, the day of the, the, the actual event. So are the distances going to be... What's the minimum, like in terms of like half meter steps? Half meter starting with two. So it's two meters, two and a half, all the way to eight. Okay. Yes. It says here it says four. Four. It's only just yeah, four. It's four. Yeah. Yeah. Four. Uh, number eight. It says four to eight meter. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Yeah. Four. You're right. Uh, okay. So the target itself is a pool a typical wading pool for a kid, uh, about that high, about that wide, and it's going to have one of your, uh, I've seen two or three in here, the, uh, the Home Depot bucket in it, and there will be a piece of foam in the bottom of that uh, the pool that the bucket sits in. Anything that hits the pool gets scored, but a slightly lower uh, number is assigned if you get in the pool versus getting into the bucket because the bucket is a little bit harder target to hit. Mm. Uh, the, ball, the balls themselves are weighted, white being the least uh, weighted ball, red, uh, orange being next, and the stripe is your, is your, uh, the, the, the gold one. It's, it's the, it's your, power it's, your high, <laughs> it's your highest prize, if you will. Mm -hmm. I don't tell them which order to shoot. You can shoot your white ones first, you can go for it, and say I'm going to go for the, the, the stripe ball first. Personally, I would say hit a couple of white ones mm -hmm. just to make sure you're on target. Whatever device you make, you want to make sure not only can you hit a distance, but have it so it's uh, constructed well enough where it's not w wobbling this way too much. Because if you do, if you're out eight meters and it's not accurate, it's going to, by the time it gets out there, it, it's probably it may miss the target, might even miss the pool. So you want it to be a fairly sturdy device, not too uh, wobbly and uh, rickety. Um, at, 
at impound, you're going to impound your device, the balls, typically in a plastic bag, so we can do a quick count, make sure they're not too many or too few. Um, any tools that you would need or they would need to make adjustments on the device while they're shooting. Um, the practice log, if you want a copy of the practice log for yourself, don't make one. Make two copies, keep one for yourself, because we're not going to return the, the log that they turn in with their devices. Um, the, the log itself, um, it, might, uh, it might record things like distance to target, elevation or angle of shooting, how much you stretch uh, a membrane, what type of membrane that might be, uh, uh, or any other attributes that we haven't figured out yet because this is all going to be new to us this year with uh, an open field for how you, what, what, what derives the energy, right? So that's going to kind of probably open up a bunch of questions that we're going to answer online between now and your district tournament. Um, any, uh, the nicer you make your practice log, uh, it's to your advantage because we're going, we have a couple of ways to break ties when we score. Uh, we were amazed at how many ties we got with, uh, that we couldn't break numerically. So we had to add the, the log, which was more of a subjective thing. So if it's well organized and shows that they understand uh, what makes the device work and, 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 and kind of what, what the process is and what they're doing, it'll go a long way if, you know, if, if, it's, if it's well organized. That'll be, it's a subjective tiebreaker. So keep that in mind. Um, let's see. All right, so the, the lines are four to eight meters. We'll tell you what the distance is at the event. You've got to practice all those distances between now and, and your district. So they, they have to get, get a lot of practice in. Um, let's see. Oh. Uh, once we tell them to go, they move their device up to the, the shooting line. We say go, no part of the device, uh, ping pong balls, uh, the, the guys on the team, the girls on the team are not allowed to cross that line, all right? They can be, everything has to be behind the line when they're shooting, uh, which also means if you have a big device that needs a little bit of, or a clumsy device that needs a little bit of support when it goes off because a lot of energy is imparted and the thing bucks and vibrates and kind of jumps and creeps along, you want to make sure it still stays behind the line and you can't have a guy standing on the front of the device to hold it down. You could have one on the side as long as they're behind the line. So that's a, an important thing to know because we're, we'll have guys out on the field uh, making sure that their devices don't cross the line and, and change things up. Um, when you're recording your information, uh, kind of a strange thing to me, if I set the distance at four meters, for example, most teams, most kids will set their device right up to that line. And that's okay. That means you're, wherever the, wherever the ball leaves the device, uh, then you're recording, okay, four, that's four meters. And you know what that distance is. Some people pull it all the way. There's nothing that says it, has, it can't be back behind the line, right? It just means that, well, okay, while I'm designing the thing for four meters, I know realistically I'm shooting a little bit more than that. But as long as your recording is, is uh, accurate and regular, you know that setting will work. Those settings, whatever you do, will work, right? It's, it's kind of a weird thing. Some people are really troubled by that line. they got to touch it. But it also means they run the risk of crossing the line, which is it's something that will... No, can't, can't, you got to stop shooting until you pull it back. Did uh, you? If, I'm sorry. Did you say how much space there was available in the competition behind the line to? Doesn't. You can if if you wanted to. If the line was the front of this desk and you wanted to set your device way back there, yeah. As long as there's room permitting, theoretically you could. There's nothing that says you can't be five feet back from the line. Okay. But it just seems to be. Since you don't know how much space you have that would make it more difficult for you to make accurate predictions on how your device is going to work. Right. You're better off being probably closer to the line. Or you have a string, you know, if you don't want it right at the line, put a string on your device or something on your device that you can say, I'm setting it a foot behind there. All my measurements have been taken 
from a foot behind the line. Mm -hmm. But by doing that, at least you're consistent. Okay. Um, the uh, <coughs> let's see. Okay, we're going to tell you what the distance is only when they go up, set up and shoot. Uh, I was going to say something, and then I lost my uh, train of thought here. Um, all right, we told you about the length of time. Um, you want it to number eight. Number eight? Yeah. <coughs> okay, so the... Do you have a question, or...? No, no. Okay. I just confused. Um, okay, so, well, the, 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 the lines that are set up are, are four to eight meters, right? Yeah. When, when, when they set, before they start shooting, there's a line that's about two meters back where they're going to sit until I say go. Then they move everything up, set up the way they want, start shooting. And then when we tell them to stop, they're done. Once they're done, we're going to tell them, pick up all your balls with your team number on it <coughs> off the floor, but don't touch or go near the pool or the bucket because we've got supervisor and supervisory help that's going to take the balls from the bucket first so we can score them by number on, on the, by team. And then we'll go back to the pool, get all the balls in the pool, score those, and we won't give you a total score at the end of it. All we can tell you is you've scored your team, and the computer will then, the, the, the results get sent upstairs, the computer does the tabulations based on the weighted averages for the balls and whether it came out of the bucket or the pool. Uh, so we, we can't give you a score, unlike the previous event, which was a rubber band catapult for some of you who've been here that mm -hmm. long. Uh, all right. Let's see. So I said there's already eight, at least eight teams shooting at any time. Um, oh, once you launch a ball, if it crosses the line, uh, whether it goes in or not, they can't touch that ball. So if they misfire and the ball crosses the line, too bad they can't touch it. If, when they miss, if they misfire or drop balls on the ground, which has happened, if they stay behind the line, the, the firing line, they can retrieve that ball, uh, that, those ping pong balls and shoot them. They're allowed to do that. Um, let's see, uh, events, any, okay, if there's any behavior or safety issues, we'll let you know and we may tell them to stop. Um, no one except the contestants and the judges are allowed in the competition area. Safety goggles are required for all contestants. Uh, so once, once we're in the shooting mode, the parents and the coaches have to kind of sit quietly back and watch their kids uh, you know, succeed or fail, just like the SATs and the ACTs that we had to do in high school. You know, if you don't know it, you don't know it. If you do, go for it, right? Um, the, uh, just as a, uh, as a point of reference, the, 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 the pale target is worth 25 points. Uh, inside the pool is, is like nine points. So it's nine times whatever the value of the white ball is, the, red, the, the orange ball, or the orange with a stripe, which obviously makes your, uh, yes? You said there was 12 inside the pool. Is there 12 inside the bucket? Uh, no. I, I, right now, there was just foam in the pool, and then the bucket is in there. We've had all kinds of arguments. People would say, well, the bottom of the pool is too soft. What kind of foam is it? Because we want to practice. And I said, it's basically one inch thick kind of open cell foam pad, basically, that we put in there mm -hmm. to fit the pool. Uh, some people have said, well, can we make the bottom of the pool, which is inflatable, can we not inflate it? Can we inflate it? We just inflate it enough. So it dampens a little bit, okay? We could just put a ring on the floor and let you hit the floor, and it might very well bounce out. It, it actually allows the balls to, uh, to not bounce out of the pool as much when we do that. So it doesn't mean, doesn't guarantee that they won't, but. Um, when they hit the dog bounce out, is it actually being tracked to see? No, nope. once target? it bounces out and hits the floor, it's, it's not countable. So only thing, only that remains in the pool or the bucket is what gets scored. So sometimes you'll get a favorable uh, favorable bounce in, 
but you may also get a favorable bounce out. It's, or you may have two balls collide in midair and <laughs> they either win or they lose. You, who knows? Okay. Hmm. Uh, when you check in, don't be late. There's uh, anyone who checks in impound late is penalized 50 points, which would uh, potentially knock you out of a, you know, a, a meddling, if you will. So be there early so we can get you in. Uh, have all your, you know, your machine, your device, the balls labeled, the the uh, uh, the log labeled, and uh, anything that you need to to work that device goes into impound. Once it's impounded, they're not going to touch it until they come back to shoot for, you know, at whatever time they choose, depending on their other events. Uh, scores are basically we count by team what's in the bucket whoever gets the highest score, then what's in the pool, um, uh, and then also the quality of the practice log, but that only comes into play if there's a tie that we can't break, and that'll happen after it's scored upstairs, and we find out, oh, we've got four ties. How do we break? We've got a numerical way to break them. If we can't do it, then we have to go back to those logs, so we may be back on the floor looking for that log. So once they've done shooting, they put their equipment back on the side, they don't touch it. You can't get your machine until after the entire event is done, usually at, what, 3 o'clock in the afternoon or so. That way, if we need to go back and look at the device or the, the, or the log, we can, we can break those ties. So now I'm going to open it up to questions. Because Is there examples on the website of what the actual competition looks like? Uh, well, uh, I don't know if it popped up on here. There's a, there's a graphic. <coughs> on the rules, which is this, okay? That's the bucket, that's the pool with the, with the foam in it, and then these inner lines are the, are the firing lines. Where these guys are out here, they're at the, the ready line where we just set everyone up uh, into a position. When I say go, they move from this line to this line, and at that point they load their devices, set up for whatever, they'll know the, the, the distance at that point, so they'll set their device up and then they start firing. And in that four minutes, it goes by quick, uh, and most teams probably are two and a half to three minutes, but we do get a few that go over, uh, but, but that's okay. We tell them to take their time. There's 15 balls over four minutes. Is there, there's a good amount of time to hit 15 balls. So. Relax, we tell them relax, breathe, have fun, you know. And that we also like the parents to clap, by the way, when their teams are out there, cheer them on. The more noise, the better. It adds to the pandemonium. Um, let's see. I won't bore you with the, the point scoring. It's in the rules. It's basically weighted averages, again, depending on the color of the ball and which, which part of the target it lands in, yes. If a team experiences a malfunction or a breakdown while they're at the line, is there, any, is there any allowance to make repairs during that time limit? They can, or? they can try to make effect repairs. Okay, so they're not uh, immediately there disqualified. There were a couple of failures that were pretty catastrophic last year, and they basically had to stand there and hold one bit and try to, to, to make it work. And uh, sadly, at least one of them, there was just, they were just, uh, in fact, one, uh, this is something I'll bring up now because it, it surprised even us. If you have a device, uh, well, let me go back. Ping pong balls in the rules are 40 millimeters in, in diameter. That's a standard ping pong ball. We have learned that the 40 millimeters, I believe, is the inside diameter of the ping pong ball and the thickness of that ball has a, an effect. If you have a, a tube that they're, let's say it's coming out of a tube, mm. make sure the ping pong ball outer diameter actually can fit in the tube without getting stuck. We so had it's, it's, three it's, devices that... It's actually like pick apart A, it's grade A, Double A. Yeah. What we found, which we're one of those three examples. Yeah, yeah. Um, is that there are different grade ping pong balls. And the thick, if the thickness of the wall makes a difference. Yeah, so, so we had one guy, the, the first ball never ball. came out of the tube, and they couldn't get it out, and they were stuck. They, they didn't get a shot off. So as long as we can shoot the ones that came with the kit, we should be okay. Well, well, the ones that. 
Just know when you buy Verify it. Verify. Whatever you buy, whether it's from us or you go out and buy your own, if you're going to do something that comes out of a tube, a PVC pipe or whatever, before you get to your district, obviously I'll know if, if at districts you put the first one in and it doesn't out of the package that you buy and just throw it down that tube and make sure it actually doesn't get stuck. Then you'll know you're golden. Or you have to go to a slightly bigger And, and, and how bigger we found tube. it out is we mixed them. Okay, so we had, yeah. we had 11 of the original and then we had three of the new or whatever. And, and during practice, we coincidentally used the working ones and then they got the competition and Murphy's Law, they loaded the new ball first yep. and and Oops. There, it, there it sat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a surprise to us. It was as big a surprise to us as it was to you, I'm sure. Probably worse for you uh, or the kids. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, just make sure that whatever goes in can come out. Uh, yes. Do uh, can a kid have a handheld device, or does it have to be on the ground? As long as the kid and the device. People have asked that question. The There's device. nothing in the rules that precludes a handheld device. Although I would means you gotta stand pretty steady and make sure that the device isn't, you know, you're not leaning or you're not doing this and crossing that line. You have to be cognizant of that, but people have used handheld devices. Some pretty simple ones too, I might add. But, you know, the, the, those were elastomeric versions, but depends on what you got. You could, from what the rules say now, you could fire the balls individually, or you could have a rapid repeater there's nothing in there that's really specifying you can do this, but you can't do that. So they've opened up the field for, the, for this year pretty wide. Uh, can you, can you yes? You might want to explain, like, if someone walks in with a store-bought slingshot, it's... Down. Yeah, you don't want, yeah, you don't want someone to walk in with a store-bought slingshot. We want someone to build a device and think about ideas that, well, okay, I'm trying to achieve this goal, I want to build something that will accomplish that goal. You don't want to go out to a store, because... But with a slingshot, you would go to a, would be a B class, class B, and you wouldn't be able to win the event with it. Really oh, or, well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah if, if they were going to do something that was obviously, they went out, bought the thing, they didn't put any effort into building it or thinking about it or whatever, hmm. uh, then we would probably class the, score them as a tier two, which means they wouldn't medal. They, they could shoot, but they wouldn't medal. The, the whole idea is that they create something, build it, test it, record the results, and show up and have some fun. Yeah. But, yeah. And with a handheld device, it can be, um, it could still not be a class B as long as they're making it. As long as they're making it, yes. Um, can you talk a little bit about, I guess, the role of the coach versus the participant, the student? Like, what, what kind of things should the coach do or not do? And then what kind of things should be expected of the coach as well, far as I, I would, guiding the okay, kids? I would suggest that the, the intent is that the children are thinking about what they want to build and participate reasonably heavily in the actual construction of the device is preferable. I get that some parents aren't comfortable and maybe some kids are not comfortable with uh, large power tools, especially saws and things like that. So having the parents help, we don't have a problem with that. But the, the, the goal is, you know, if you're, if you're assisting them building the device for safety and making sure they're not cutting fingers and toes off and what have you, that's fine. Uh, but we would like them to participate and, you know, they're the ones that are intended to be designing this. I mean, yep. the parent, I, trust me, I know, the parents want to help, especially guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same Can't. question I have, because you, you, know, you show up to Pinewood Derby and you see that machine that <laughs> 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 yeah. to take welded, make welded aluminum devices put in there that look like they came out of Boeing's plant in yeah. Washington <laughs> that were, yeah, they, they fared mediocre uh, compared to a couple of handheld devices that were spectacular, actually. So it's not always about the, the high tech, you know, this thing was built in dad's shop, you know, get the kids involved with it. You know, that, the, the intent is get the kids involved, uh, try to stay away, try to not tend to think like a lawyer, okay, mm -hmm. and figure out how can we get, just go with the flow, you know, go with the intent of the, of the game. If you have a question, you put it on the website. We'll answer it. If, if, if I can't tell you today, or we didn't think of something, we go, oh, we didn't think about that. 
Mm. We'll, po we'll, we'll post an answer on you uh, within a few days. Yes. Um, the son's already done this. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll take you right after this, this guy. Um, if he wants to gut one of his nerve guns and use it as a propulsion device, how would that go into the scoring? He wants to gut a nerve Take it bomb. apart, and it, it's an automatic nerve dart, dart gun. But he's effectively using the nerf gun, though? Uh, no, the propulsion itself was the, the uh, spring the electric motor. I mean, Plus if you're using an electric area. motor from a thing like that and applying it to a, a device that you're making, I probably wouldn't have a problem with that. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that in for a discussion. Hmm. So you're not using the device, you're just using maybe a couple of parts from that device. Like he said, the firing mechanism. Yeah, okay. But building the firing mechanism into a PVC pipe or something of that nature to shoot the... Uh, okay, well, we'll, we'll, I'll look at that when we, t when we talk amongst ourselves. Uh, you had a question in the back. Well, as a first-time coach with the logs, yes. do we want to include, like, scheming of how we put it together, as, you know, as a group? You're, you're thinking in terms of the process of the whole build? Exactly. Uh, it's less about that and more about showing that they know how to uh, quantify uh, the device and the performance of the device and, you know, to get that ball to a specific target. So you're basically practicing from four to eight, that's, uh, what, four times two, that's at least eight firing positions mm -hmm. that you're practicing to Not and you're so recording. You can do it each distance on a separate sheet if you want. You could do uh, what we told them last year when they were doing rubber bands. If you had a rubber band, is it a tiny rubber band for short distances? Is it a big, thick one for longer distances or vice versa? I just don't want to be uh, coached to end up them doing really well and then come down to me doing something wrong. Well, well, no, no. It's, it's, it's less about saying, well, you know, we, you know we, we were thinking about doing the device this way. It's not more of a, a story about from start to finish, it's more about the recording of the data. Okay. It was really the intent. Yes, sir. The, uh, there, last, last year the rule said uh, kinetic air. This Correct. This year it doesn't say that. It just says stored energy. So stored energy, yeah. Well, last air. year it was elastomeric. This year... Right, but compressed air can be used. Right? Compressed air, yeah. Yep. Okay. yeah. The only thing you got to be careful of is uh, you're not using some... Uh, uh, fuel or or lead acid, bed, you know, no, something think, that would be dangerous. I think people would be bringing like a air compressor, you know, stored. They're going to plug in the air stored in the container already. It would have to be whatever right. was stored in the container because there won't right. be a plug available. So yes. What is the time requirement of the event? Does it start immediately at eleven or at eleven thirty? Uh, I want to say. I'm trying to remember if. Uh, on the, uh, in the May event, what time did I think it was around nine or nine thirty? Might have been nine thirty. But the impound was probably a half hour before that. So as long as you're in, you want to make sure you're in impound uh, either early or on time. Don't be late because that costs you fifty points. So that's kind of a drag for the kids. Uh, yes, I'll get you to. Um, you had mentioned tie breaking and a numeric way to resolve that. Yes. Hammers a little long. What's the numeric way? The numeric way, okay. Uh, tie breaks are as follows. They take the total points uh, in the bucket as one. Then they look at the total points scored by the colored balls. And then they look, if they can't break it with those two, then they go to the quality of the team practice log. So usually we can break it with the first two, but there were a couple of instances where we couldn't. So if one team got all their points with no bucket, the other team got a bucket, then the bucket The bucket wins. would, yes. Okay. Right. Yes. Yes. My question was about the logs. So yes. you said we, we want to have a second copy. Will we get the original back to where you ended it at? Or like well, I, well, I suppose you would, unless we took it into the computer room, but typically it would remain with the device until such time as we release all the devices to the parents so at the end of the event. You potentially you would, but it, we're, we're saying to be sure if you want a copy, make a second copy well, of it. Well, obviously, because we have two events, the first one and then the county one. Oh, well, okay, okay. Oh, you're talking about difference between district. Uh, districts, we don't care. There seem to be, 
with the exception of uh, Utica, which is on the Tuesday, which is really kind of loosely, it's more like a practice session for them, which I've never quite understood. But the other, you know, South Macomb and Poa Valley and all these ones, they're pretty, they're, they're set up to be just like the one in May, so the kids know what to expect. The one at Utica tends to be, well, we're just kind of practicing and getting it going, and then they show up, at, to me, they show up in May, and a lot of the kids, and even the parents, they don't really know what to expect, which seems odd to me. So, so when you're talking, everything that you're talking about is about the county. Is about the main event. Yeah, okay. mm, that's the, that's that's good the question, one that counts, right? Okay. The districts are your opportunity to say, hey, you're now in a team, you're in a situation like you're going to be. This is how it is. And you actually get a score. And I think some of those events, they do give them participation or award. I think they score the first three teams. You know, but it gives them a more real world view of, the, of what the event's going to be like. Yes. Is that going to be a Scantron exam? Anything? No. Anything? No. It's strictly we count the balls, we log them onto the score sheets, and then once uh, at the end of the day we send them upstairs, and then it only takes us 20 minutes to score everything. Yes. Does the center bucket sit on the foam inside the pool? Yes, it does. Okay. I just wasn't sure. And the center bucket is just like uh, I saw the the, the Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. Ones, yeah. I saw that. I just was, so, was curious if it was like it just, we park it right it in like, the middle. Or the phone we was like a donut. Go out <laughs> yeah. Before the day, we go out. Yeah. We put a, mark, a target on the yeah. floor for the center just of the pool, so we can guarantee that they're yeah exactly pretty accurately placed between all the shooters. Yeah. And then I go and tape all of the positions. Uh, so uh, somebody else over here had a question. Really? Yeah. That one. yeah. No such thing. When you talk about the log, you're just looking for basically calibration numbers, right? Basically, that's what you're doing, and and it also allows the kids to understand more about their device. Because right. we may actually ask them when they impound. So, uh, what made you think of this idea? We may ask them a couple of questions to see if the kids really understand what they participate. That, that was kind of going along with why I asked about the nerf gun, the, yeah. the cuts out of it. Yeah.